As part of our book festival coverage, Book TV attended the 2018 National Press Club Book Fair, where we spoke with White House correspondent April Ryan about covering the Trump administration. White House correspondent April Ryan's latest book is called Under Fire, reporting from the front lines of the Trump White House. Ms. Ryan, what's the difference between covering a President Trump and some of the other presidents that you've covered? There's a huge difference. Um, the, the biggest difference is, is that uh, with the other presidents that I've covered, the last three versus this fourth president, even though they did not agree with us and there might have been some retaliation, but there was still a friendly adversarial relationship where there was a respect. We understood that we had to work with one another. With this administration, with this administration, the problem is, is that this president looks at us as the enemy. When we tell the truth and when we give fact, he believes that we're the opposition. He believes we have an agenda. He doesn't understand that we are one of the pillars of the foundation of this nation, what the founding fathers put in place. Um, it's just, it's an awkward, painful, deadly time for reporters in this administration compared to the prior administrations that I've covered. What's a typical day at the White House for you now? <laughs> Hurry and wait. You know, most days there's no briefing. The president may talk. You wait for him to speak, you wait for him to take your question or not take your question. Um, it's a different day. It's a very different day. Uh, the dynamic has changed. We have, we're losing ground when it comes to being a part of the fourth estate in that place. You know, we're not getting the daily back and forth. We're not getting the access. We're not finding out the things about what's happening, what the president's thought pattern is to a certain issue of policy. But we'll hear him when he allows us to come in. We used to have more back and forths with principals and the the, the press secretary, but now um, it's different. And we are now, again, part of that is because they don't like us. We are under fire, if you will. I am under fire for the questions that we ask. And it's a different day. We have to see how this plays out. Now, April Ryan, we've seen the public interaction between you and Sarah Huckabee Sanders, you and the Haven't president. Seen it? <laughs> Is it different privately between you no. and the administration? No. Um, what is unfortunate is, is that I've had a great relationship with everyone I've worked with until this administration. We tried to reset, but as long as Sarah Huckabee Sanders is performing for an audience of one, her boss, her daddy boss I call, the President of the United States, um, she will never have a kind word to say to me or a friendly way to treat me, friendly adversarial way to treat me in that room or in that building. Um, it's bad. It's really bad. And what I try to do is just keep my head up and do my job. It's not about me. It's about the story. It's about the issue. It's not about me. Your first book was The Presidency in Black and White. This yes. one's called Under Fire. Yes. Similarities or differences between the two books? Big differences. This book was tougher to write because um, it's about me. And as a journalist, you're not supposed to be the story. And I had to take you inside to the fights, the real fights, the arguments, the name calling, the back and forth, why they put me on a blacklist, why they don't like me. I had to tell you, I brought you inside. I took the veil off the mystery about the White House, bringing you in from my straw holes view as a reporter who's covered that place for 21 years and four presidents of what is different now, the danger, how it all started, and just the difference of this atmosphere versus atmospheres of years ago. And it's, 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 it's my story, it's true, it's true. And it was painful, it took me six, it was, it was hard to write this. The other, the other books, the first book, um, I let people talk and tell their story. Everyone has a story, but I don't like telling my own because I'm reporting on other people. And it was tough. Now, your life has changed quite a bit since the Trump administration came into office. You're regular on CNN now. You've been a lot more public. Well, see, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. You know, Sean Spicer and Sarah, um, the president, and even Steve Bannon have said, you know, oh, you're, you're, you're huge now because of us. No, I was always there. And people want to say that I did this. 
No, you put the spotlight on me by telling me stop shaking my head when I didn't shake my head. You put the spotlight on me when you told me to get the CBC together for a meeting. I didn't do that. You did that. So I've been doing this for a long time. I've been out there. And when it comes to CNN, we have been talking. There were things going on prior to you. So it just kind of happened at the same time. But this, this president did not make me. I am Baltimore made. I am Morgan State made. I am April made. I was just prepared for the time. Presidents Clinton, W. Bush, Obama, and Trump. One story from each. One story, Bill Clinton, the race initiative. The soul food dinner that I put together with black journalists and Bill Clinton talking about race. George W. Bush, um, there are two stories. I toured the, uh, the gallery, the Corcoran Art Gallery across the street from the White House. We walked with Mrs. the First Lady Laura Bush and we uh, toured the G's Bend quilt exhibit. And we watched the primitively crafted quilts, viewed them. And in that space, we saw a, a quilt that said vote. And we saw these old elderly women, these elderly women who still felt the stain of slavery, oppression, Jim Crow. And they encircled the then first lady and just raised their hand screaming, thank you, Jesus, and started to cry. Because they felt that the highest office in the land was paying attention to them. And George W. Bush, I've got so much to talk about. We, we, we had a great conversation all the time about issues of race. And one of the things that stand out in my mind about him uh, is the night that Barack Obama was uh, named president, the 44th president of the United States. The, uh, not Trump, excuse me, the, the Bushes would go to bed at 9.30 at night. The lights were on until 11, until he was named president. And I'll never forget the spontaneous crowd that came to the White House. I was at the White House, and I saw the kids chanting, na, 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 hey, Bush goodbye. He heard that, but he still celebrated the change in history for Barack Obama. He told me weeks prior to that, he said he saw the subtle and overt racism that was going on. I was, I was shocked, you know, the, the honesty and the conversation. And I'll never forget the day that Barack Obama, the day after he was elected, and the president marked history from the uh, Rose Garden. He was in the Oval Office very upset. And I don't know what was going on. He was pacing back and forth. And we were waiting for him to come out. We were in the Rose Garden. And he had Steve, Hanley, had Steve Hadley and others in the office. And then all of a sudden, he was very angry. He turned to the, the French doors and saw me. And he stopped. And he raised the roof. And we both laughed. It just changed the atmosphere in that room. And now a story this president. Hmm. What about what President Obama? Obama? President Obama. What's a good story about President Obama? Traveling to Africa with him. Um, doing the interview with him on Air Force One. And I don't tell this story a lot, but and it's not about politics or policy. This is a personal thing. When he was leaving office, he and Michelle Obama were leaving the White House. They granted my two daughters a personal audience with them to say goodbye. And that was that was special. And it was it was it was touching for me. It's not about politics, it's not about policy. My children saw themselves in these two historic persons in this White House. And now to President Trump. What do I think about the most? What can I, the, the, think, the thing that I think about him is, uh, can you get the CBC together? I think about why I'm in the, 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 the center of the fire for them because of Omarosa, who's now gone. The residue still lingers. And I think about, um, a day that still bothers me, the day that I asked the president, Mr. President, are you a racist? January 2018. And now uh, we're the latter part of 2018, and people are calling it out. And they were very angry with me for asking that question, but if you remember the lead up to that question, S whole nations versus Norway, people were saying it. And think about Charlottesville and, and, and La David Johnson and how they treated Congresswoman Frederica Wilson. I think about all that in the buildup to that question. And I asked the head of the NAACP, I said, look, what is the definition of a racist? They said the intersection or the meeting of power and prejudice. So I asked the question. He never answered me. And he answered that question like three days later, that Sunday. 
But now the nation is bringing that, that question up again. And I'm in trouble for that. But I'm a reporter who sees what's going on. I listen to the wind. I listen to my sources. I listen to what they have to say. And I ask the questions. And for that, I get in trouble. I'm under fire. Have you been able to develop sources in this White House? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, it's interesting. My, I have great Republican sources. I have great Republican sources. Um, I call them whistleblowers. Um, they give me good, credible information. I mean, if I can't be so bad. Steve Bannon wanted to have two hours with me in his home. You know, I had my security with me, but, <laughs> but I mean, I can't be so bad. But um, it's been an interesting ride, and, and I don't want to. I don't want to talk about the other people, high-ranking people that I've talked with. But yeah, I, I still talk. They. I don't think it's a game. I think they want me to know that they don't like me. But at the same time, they understand that there's an audience out there that I reach. And sometimes they come to me. Sometimes they reach out to me. And other times they shun me. But it's OK, because I'll be there, I pray, when they're gone, like I've been with others. Under Fire is the name of April Ryan's newest book. The Presidency in Black and White was her previous, and another one coming. Another one is coming. I had at Mama's Knee as well in there. Three books. Um, I'm working on. I'm working. I'm doing a little reshifting. This was a very interesting year. This book really. Um, it took a lot out of me. It hurt me because I had to relive it again. And out of this book, something else is being born. And and and, and looking at the struggles and and how people are handling change or trying to make change. So I think there's another book coming. I think there's another book coming very soon. April Ryan, thanks for your time on Book TV. I love Book TV. I love Book TV. Keep an eye out for more interviews from the National Press Club's Book Fair to air in the near future. You can also watch them and any of our programs in their entirety at booktv.org. Type the author's name in the search bar at the top of the page.